It's the closest thing to immortality. And nature makes it a contest. Awarding mating rights to the strongest or the most talented or the best smelling. Or maybe just the one who gets there first. Animals will put themselves at risk for the chance to breed, driven to devise their most seductive methods to survive the wild. Giraffes are so tall, they can see into the future. From their perspective above the savannah, these living watchtowers often see danger first. If they bulk, so does everyone else. But this time of year, they've got more on their minds than lions and leaf eating. In South Africa's Kruger National Park, it's giraffe mating season. The recent rains have brought the landscape to life. In this time of plenty, the bull knows he stands the best chance to find a mate. A young female catches his eye, but he needs to be sure she's breeding material. He's not too shy to check. To see if she's in heat, he nudges his head against her backside, prodding her to urinate. He can taste and smell if she's fertile. This doe is good to go, but she's no pushover. With the persistent bull glued to her backside, she wanders through the herd to see if a more attractive suitor will step forward. Her strategy is working. This fellow falls for her charms.
with two suitors on her tail, she can test which is the most worthy. While she looks on, the rival bulls face off. They start slowly, prodding each other. If neither of them backs down, the long-necked Lotharios come out swinging. Among giraffes, length matters. Their necks might have evolved as a weapon for these sexual contests. The shorter necked rival concedes. The original bull has proven his valor. Now he can claim his prize. While the courtship is complicated, the mating takes only a few seconds. But the whole ritual assures that the strongest male in the herd gets to continue his bloodline. From long-necked giants to tiny eight-legged lovers, nature provides perfect pairings. For some people, the only thing more disturbing than spiders is the thought of spiders having sex. It happens more than anyone realizes. At least six new species of peacock spiders weren't discovered until 2016. About the length of a grain of rice, these amorous arachnids perform a dance that one of their lives depends on. They live almost exclusively in Australia. In the unspoiled bushland of the Blue Mountains, a peacock spider mating ritual begins. This male is on the lookout for a mate. He's more brightly colored than the hard to find female.
And he can't see very well despite his eight eyes. Still, somehow he spots her and cautiously approaches. She appears to welcome his advances. He cautiously begins to court her, though the budding romance can quickly go pear-shaped. During his love dance, he'll fan the colorful extensions of his abdomen like the tail of a peacock. Some species also vibrate as they dance. If the female doesn't like his act or isn't interested in the first place, she could end the show by eating him. Today, he's in luck. She's enjoying the performance. Encouraged, he continues. He might have to prove he's fit and worthy by dancing for almost an hour. And all the while, he needs to be ready to leap to safety should his audience change her mind. The peacock spider's seductive dance has rarely been caught on camera. The female will mate with only the best dancers because good dancing means good genes. But even if he were Gene Kelly, she still might devour him if she's just not in the mood. But if he succeeds, he'll have passed his talents to his heirs. And that's the point, after all. While the male peacock spider performs his dance of love. In another part of Australia, an even more stimulating mating ritual is underway. It's not difficult to see why fruit bats are also called flying foxes. They're the largest bats with a wingspan almost as wide as a bald eagle's. Unlike their relatives that gobble insects or sip nectar, Fruit bats mainly eat fruit. And while they might enjoy lapping up fruit juice, they also use their tongues in a provocative mating ritual. In Queensland, Australia, in the Jardine River National Park, the bats begin their ritual. Viewer discretion advised. All winter, flying foxes live in large single-sex colonies. But come summer, mating season, all that changes. 
Swarming together in their thousands, the bats have no shortage of potential mates. In all the seeming confusion, the males perform feats of aerial acrobatics to demonstrate their fitness to the females. Scent glands on the male's shoulders might bolster their sex appeal. Female then picks out a suitably agile and musky male. They settle into a relatively quiet roost within the trees to begin mating. bats, they copulate upside down. But before they get to that, the male performs an act unknown to almost any other mammal, oral sex. In some species of fruit bat, the female returns the favor. The saliva might disinfect against bacteria or chlamydia, or the action may prolong the mating time, increasing the chance of fertilization. When the male senses the female is ready to mate, he moves behind and embraces her, pinning her wings and biting her neck. In about 20 seconds, he's done, and she goes off to look for another mate. And another. The easy part's done. She'll delay her pregnancy until spring, then finally give birth to a single pup, which she'll have to carry around on her flights for six weeks until it can manage on its own. With only one baby a year, and with male flying foxes not sexually mature until later in their 30-year lifespan, these bats reproduce slowly, despite their enthusiasm. The forests of Australia are ripe with mating strategies. Even drowsy koalas join in. Koalas eat nothing but slightly toxic, hard to digest, barely nutritional eucalyptus leaves. So who would blame him for sleeping up to 22 hours a day? But when he's not eating or sleeping, he's energized by his urge to mate. 
For this young Joey, the breeding season means the time's coming to stop clinging to mum and start eating and sleeping on his own. Because mother will soon be pregnant again. Northwest of Sydney, Australia, in the Wallamai National Park, the koala breeding season has arrived. From August through February, this fellow puts his solitary life on hold to find a mate. Relocating to a neighborhood with eligible females is one of the few times he's motivated to leave the safety of the branches. On the ground, He's an easy target for dingoes, dogs, or foxes. So he's anxious to return to the trees as soon as he can. As he climbs, scent glands on his chest advertise him to any females in the area, while also spelling a warning for rival males to keep clear. Hidden in the trees, he uses his voice to serenade interested females. A recently discovered vocal organ lets him unleash a hiccup like bellow that announces his size and fitness. Females aren't attracted just to the largest males with the loudest bellows. For koalas, size isn't everything. The ladies enjoy variety from year to year. Homing in on the bellows of new males ensures genetic diversity. The choosy females reject more mates than they accept. So he goes on a lot of bad dates. Resoundingly rejected by this female, he retreats before he gets badly scratched. Cutting his losses, he will wait for now, conserving his energy before seeking a more willing partner. Maybe he'll find romance in the moonlight. And so he has. She invites him up.
koalas aren't monogamous. But that doesn't mean she won't select him again later in the season or next year. But until then, he'll have plenty of time to rest and get ready. When koalas aren't mating, they just want to be left alone. And that's probably the only thing koalas have in common with tigers. Tigers, the biggest of the big cats, live solitary lives. And when these predators meet, it is typically for one of two reasons, to fight or to mate. In Rajasthan, northern India, Bengal tigers rule Ratambore National Park. This restless female prowls the fringes of her territory. She is on the hunt, but not for game. She's in a breeding mood. She advertises for her position by spraying urine and scraping trees so males in neighboring territories can find her. She punctuates her campaign of scratches and smells with urgent yowling. Surely that will bring the suitors? Female tigers routinely mark their turf. But just before they begin estrus, they do it more frequently. And the scent is different to tip off the males. It works. A male has caught her scent and seeks her out. He crosses into her territory. When the pair finally meet, the female is naturally cautious. He's considerably larger, and she won't risk a fight. but he makes his intention clear. He courts her by following closely. The act of mating makes her fertile, so he'll keep at it over the next five or six days. If a rival shows up in the meantime, they'll fight over her. When she's ready to mate, 
She lies down in front of him. They touch whiskers and nibble at each other before he mounts her. Their short, frequent matings ensure she conceives. When the time comes, the two part ways, returning to their solitary lifestyles. As the male heads back to his territory, he remains vigilant for signs of other females. He must be ready if the opportunity presents itself again. While future tiger mums actively seek their mates, green sea turtles arrange a rendezvous. Sea turtles have plied the world's oceans for over a hundred billion years, so they must know a thing or two about successful mating. But that doesn't make it easy. As the mating season approaches, this male green sea turtle must swim up to 600 miles to find a partner. Off the coast of northeastern Australia, Heron Island within the Great Barrier Reef is his annual destination. Weeks after he started his journey from as far away as Indonesia, he arrives. The island is the ancestral nesting site for females who'll soon be arriving in a mating mood. So, he waits. When the first female arrives, he's quick to approach her. They won't be alone for long. Soon enough, his competition arrives. While he holds tight, they ram and bite his tail and flippers, hoping to knock him off the female. He's helpless to fend them off. Using his claws and all his strength to monopolize his mate, he clings on and endures the attacks until the female makes the break. But it's not like he won't have other chances. Females outnumber males, and they both aim to breed with as many partners as possible. Still, he wants to do the job right. 
His penis can be almost half the length of his shell, and he can cling to the female's back for up to 24 hours or until she decides she's had enough of him. Female green sea turtles can store sperm for months in the long passageways leading to their ovaries. Sperm from multiple males might compete in her oviducts, ensuring genetic diversity. Once the male's finished mating, he makes his way back to the open waters. For the female, the test of endurance has just begun. Along with others, she laboriously drags herself ashore on the same beach where she was born. Her strategy, like her mother's before her, is to safely bury her clutch of as many as 200 fertilized eggs. She returns to the water. The eggs and hatchlings are on their own now. While male sea turtles will return to the island next year, the egg-laying females won't be back for several years, so they can regain their strength. When it comes to long-distance romance, sea turtles aren't the only ones who must cover a lot of ground. Possibly the world's most iconic butterfly. The monarch or wanderer is famous for its striking pattern and its epic migration. For many, the odyssey begins near the United States border in Canada's Algonquin Provincial Park. The end of one monarch generation marks the beginning of another. As their butterfly parents die off, New caterpillars emerge from eggs laid on the underside of milkweed leaves. They come into the world ravenous. Over the next two weeks, the caterpillars gorge themselves on milkweed, their only food. They'll grow almost 3,000 times their original size. three weeks, they enter the chrysalis stage and undergo one of the most dramatic transformations in the animal kingdom. At about week five, it's the end of the world for the chrysalis, but the butterfly's life has just begun.
While the caterpillars were built to feed, the butterflies are built to breed. They live just a few weeks, mating and laying eggs. The cycle repeats several times until a special generation emerges, the migration generation. Migrating monarchs must preserve their species over the harsh winter months. Instead of mating, they use their energy to take to the skies. Millions of them flock over 3,000 miles to the warmer climes of Mexico. Astonishingly, while this generation has never been here before, they arrive on the same grounds used by their great-grandparents. But this is no time to celebrate. Even in these warmer climes, winter remains a threat and mating remains on hold. Massing together on tree branches, the butterflies pool their body heat to protect each other from the elements. But the weight of so many butterflies can tragically snap weaker branches, causing casualties. For those who make it through the winter, spring heralds a frenzy of breeding. After mid-air courting, the male takes the female to ground where he stays attached to her for up to several hours. He deposits a nutritious capsule of sperm to fertilize her eggs and give her the stamina to lay them. After mating, they start on the homeward journey. But these butterflies will not make it back. Worn out from their long migration and the ravages of winter, they will lay eggs en route before dying, leaving it up to the next generation to continue the never-ending journey of their species. While monarchs flutter across the new world, in Africa, another colorful mob starts a new generation. The salty, alkaline waters of Africa's volcanic lakes feed vast and rosy blooms of algae. Which in turn feed almost equally rosy flocks of hungry birds, flamingos. Thermal geysers provide spa-like conditions which only add to the appeal of the place. But they haven't really come for the food and a warm soak. 
the real reason for their gathering is about to become clear. In Kenya, the salty waters of Lake Bogoria are set to host one of the largest gatherings of flamingos in the world. As the numbers of these elegant wading birds swell around the steaming geysers, things are about to get even steamier. It's mating time, and looking good is a top priority for these famously fancy birds. They get their blush from pigments in the plankton they eat. Pink flamingos may be more popular than not-so-pink ones. They gather by the hundreds of thousands, like a massive singles bar, each one looking to pair up. Then suddenly, everyone hits the dance floor, with males and females trying to impress each other with their funky moves. Classics include the head flag and the twist preen. Eventually, guys and girls pair up and find a quieter spot. Despite their penchant for huge crowds, flamingos are thought to be monogamous. All the couples will raise their chicks at the same time. At the edge of the lake, the mating pair will build a nest together. They'll both take care of their single egg. Mating simultaneously as their thousands of neighbors helps guard the nest against predators. As mating season draws to an end, the flamingos return to feeding. But rather than coloring their lustrous coats, this time they regurgitate a liquid meal to feed their chicks. In a few weeks, when the chicks become independent, the adults will separate and move on. They won't return here until the algae blooms again. <laughs> 